Hello there, it's Graciela on the side of the screen. In this video, we're going to learn how to dynamically fill out Word templates using Power Automate. Let's suppose that we have this letter that is sent to some users after they submit an application. The first stage of the process is filling out this template with basic fields such the first name, last name, phone, and email. After the first part is done, someone needs to come into the generated template and do some minor adjustment to this text to customize it for the specific applicant. And then they need to go to the last page and add some images, documents, and additional notes. So after this manual step is completed, they need to send this to a manager for the manager to review. Once it's reviewed, the manager has to approve or reject the ap application. And finally, if it's approved, it needs to add some details into the approval area about who approved and the date it was done. And we also need to add a due date here, that is 14 days after the approval date. So the first set of fields that we're going to fill out, that's going to be out of the same template. But once we reach the last stage of the process where the approval happens, we need to use the same file that was generated that was modified with the manual steps. And on top of that, we need to add these final two details. And there is when the dynamic part comes. And we're going to be using these SharePoint leads for this automation. Whenever a new record is added on this SharePoint list, we want to start the process and generate the template. And whenever the status changes to under approval, we want to do the last part of the process, which is filling out the approval area and the due date. So we're going to go to Power Automate and start a new automated cloud flow. I'm going to use the when an item is created or modified trigger. This is because we care about the two actions. We want to know when a new item is created in the list, and we also want to know when it is updated for the status. What we're going to do is just add a name and then hit on create. We're going to select what's the SharePoint site that we want to wor work with and what's the list name. So we are just going to add a new step and search for the switch action. What this is going to do is going to evaluate what's the status of the request whenever it's created or whenever it's modified and do something in certain actions based on that status value. So in our first case, whenever it's set to submit it, what we want to do is just to generate a new template and store it into SharePoint. For us to work with Word templates, we need to upload them into SharePoint. So I'm just going to go to my SharePoint site and I have created a folder called applications. The template that I want to work with is already stored under the template folder. Then we have the applications folder that is just going to have everything that has been generated for the first time. And finally, we have the approved folder in which we are going to drop the final items that are approved. So for this case, what we want to do is to save a new, a brand new template into this folder. So I'm just going to add a new action and search for the word action to fill out our first stage of the template. That's going to be populate a Microsoft Word template. And we're going to select where the file is and then the library. And finally, what's the file that we want to work with? This is applications and then under template and then let's select our template after we do that automatically it's gonna just recognize the fields that we set what we are gonna fill in the first stage is just the phone number so let's just map it to sharepoint first name last name for the full name we're gonna uh, use the first name and then blank space and finally the last name and we're gonna just select the email from here we need to leave the due date and the approval details blank for now because that's something that we are saving for when the request is approved. So once we have the template filled out, we need to store that in SharePoint. So we're just going to use the create file action. Again, let's select what's the SharePoint site. We want to save this under applications. The file name, what we're going to do to easily identify what's which file belongs to which request. We're just going to add a new column here to show what's the ID. And we're going to store the files with this ID and then the word extension. So let's just select the ID and then dot docx. 
And finally, the file content for this new file we want to create, it's going to come from the content of our generated template. So let's just save and test our progress so far. So let's just go to test manually and let's go back to the SharePoint list to add a new record. And then once we have all the information filled out, we're just going to click on save. And that should start our flow shortly. Okay, so it runs successfully. So I'm just going to go to my SharePoint site. And you can see that a new Word file has been created for request number three. And we're just going to open this so we can take a look. And you can see that it has filled out the name, the phone and email. And now our user can come and do the manual updates to the text here. And then go to the final page and add some notes and images. And once our user has performed all the manual updates that this file requires, they just need to save it. And the last part of this process should just be sending this for approval. So we're just going to close this and let it save. And we're going to go back to Power Automate to update our flow for when this status changes to under approval. So let's add a new case here. So in this case, what we want to do whenever the status update is under approval and we need to make sure it's written the same way. And we're going to add a new action to send this for approval. And we're going to use the built in option to submit approvals and we're going to use start and wait for an approval. We're going to use everyone must approve. And that doesn't really matter because we are only going to have one approval and that's going to, for now, assign it to myself. Then the title is going to be new application or and the first name and last name. We are just going to add some details and then the item description. And of course, we want the approvers to see the file before they approve it. So what we're going to do is just to link that into our approval request. So we're just going to grab this from the site URL basic here. And we know that after shared documents, we have this file saved under applications. And then we have the ID of the item and finally the file extension. So when that happens, the approval is going to receive this information. They are going to review the file. And after that, they can decide if they are going to approve or not. So in this case, we need to add a conditional to determine which of the two paths we're going to work with. So I'm going to add this condition and we are going to evaluate what's the outcome of the approval. And if it's equals to approved, then what we want to do is to work with this word template again and fill it out. So if our approver is saying that this file number three for this applicant is OK and we should move forward in the process, then we should take this same file and work with it. So again, we need to use the same action that we used previously, which is the word connector for word templates. And we're going to do the same thing of selecting what's the location, document library and file. And in the previous step in which we were generating the, the template for the first stage of the process, we selected a file from this uh, template folder. However, this time we need to dynamically select the file that relates to the request that was approved. So for now, I'm just going to select file number three and automatically that's going to make Word recognize what are the fields for that file. However, we're not always going to use file number three because file number three just belongs to request number three. So this three here needs to be dynamic. So we need that to be mapped to the ID of the request. So I'm just going to select that and then remove this number three. As you can see, this makes automatically Word stop recognizing what are the items that we need to fill out for this template. And instead of that, it just gave us this dynamic file schema field that we need to fill out with some information. Now, if I go to the previous action that we created and then I click on the three dots and then click on this option that is called pick code, as you can see, this code shows me some IDs and shows me what are the fields that we are mapping to each of the IDs. So these numbers that you see here are the numbers that internally Word is assigning to each of the fields that we added to the template. 
So what we're going to do is just add some indication of what is the due date. This is a temporary thing so we can see the code. Then go back to pick code. And now we know what's the ID for due date and what's the ID for the approval details. So what we're going to do is just go to the dynamic file schema field, add a curly bracket and then a closing one at the end. And in the middle, we're going to just uh, create kind of a JSON structure. So the first part is just going to be this ID. And then in the right area, we're going to just write what's the value that we're going to assign to that specific field. In this case, this is the ID for the due date. So what is the due date that I want to assign? We know that whenever this is approved, we're just going to add 14 days to that. So I will just go here in the middle of my um, quotes and add an expression. We're going to add the expression add days to UTC now and then add 14 days. Then click OK. Then let's just add a comma, enter, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add this ID. And if you have a minus sign at the beginning, make sure to always add it as part of the ID. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And then ellipsis. And finally, this is the approval details. So what we're going to do is just use this response summary as part of um, what we're going to add in that area. So now we can click done here. And finally, we can just remove this because we don't want this to be part of the first template that we generate. And then once we have this word template, I'm just going to rename it. And once we have the file filled out for the approved request, we can do many things such converting to PDF or sending the file through email to the user. But just to keep it simple, what we're going to do is just store the approved file in this approved folder in the applications folder. So I'm just going to go to add a new action and create a new file. Again, we're going to select what's the SharePoint site that we're going to work with where we want to save it. It's under shared documents and then applicants, applications, and finally on the approved folder. Then the file name is again going to be the ID and then the word extension. And finally, the file content is going to be the content that we are creating from the final template that we were filling out. So now we can save. And we're going to test what happens whenever we change the item to the under approval status. So I'm just going to test it, then manually, and then test here. So this is request number three. I'm just going to edit it, change it to status under approval, then hit save. And let's wait for it to run. So now it's running and the first part is sending this for approval. So I just received this in my email and Teams as well. And here I can just click on the link that we created for the ID. Then I'm just going to click on open and that's going to show me how the file looks in Word. And here the approver can review the information and they can see how everything has been filled out. They can go to the last page and see the notes and documents. And once they are good, that this is good to go, they can just click here on approved add some comments and then click on submit. And once this is done, this is going to move to the next stage of the process, which is just generating the file dynamically based on the previous template. And the process moved to the next stage, but I just realized that I add a D at the end of the outcome status. So the way that it is, the way that it's written is just approved without the D at the end. So I'm just going to delete this and then hit don't save and I'm just going to resubmit my flow to see the new template created. So I'll just approve again. And this time the outcome was written properly. So this goes to the right branch. And in this case, we're just populating the dynamic file that is number three. So I'll just go to the approved folder and then here the file was saved properly. And then I'm just going to click on open in app and here we can see that we are using the existing file that was generated from the previous step and then here we added the approval details and the due date on top of an existing file that we had in SharePoint that is not defined previously but used dynamically. So this is a structure that we need to use whenever we are working with dynamic files and we can take a look at what's the ID that Word is assigning to this field using the pick code option.
And that's it for now. We hope that this was useful for you. See you next time.